Hey guys, make sure to like and subscribe, any support from y'all is appreciated. If you want me to post a specific manga or novel leave a comment and I'll try my best. If the video is too fast or slow for your liking then you can adjust it in the right corner of the video. My current goal is to hit 500 subscribers. See you later. Farewell, Dark Lord and his subordinates. The Lanny group and Alea were bidding farewell to Soda and the rest. Alea was here because they met her after the fireworks. She joined their group and became their guide in this empire. She knew a lot of things in this empire so they found the things that Soda didn't find when they were touring around. Everyone was happy so it was fine but... Something was bothering him. Soda was bothered by one thing and at their last stop. It was ominous. He could clearly remember everything that happened in that closed room. Later, Soda said while glancing at Alea, the carriage moved forwards and grew farther away from the empire. They were the bodyguards of this carriage as they took this escort quest before they left. My lady, they left. The butler said to Princess Alea. Yeah, the Dark Lord. All of them are going to face calamity soon. They are standing in a thread that could snap out at any moment. Alea said as she recalled what happened at night. We couldn't see everything because of the rules. We're going to suffer consequences if we tried to peek again. Alea said before she closed her eyes. Furthermore, she couldn't see anything. Her condition grew worse after seeing them. It seems that her powers are taking a huge toll on her body. Why did you let them meet her, my lady? The butler asked Alea in a polite tone. At first, I was just curious in their group but after observing them for a few days I found that they are moving forwards at a faster rate, Alea said in a deep tone. What do you mean, my lady? The butler asked. I couldn't say it but you will know what I mean in the future. This is the third time we saw people like them this year, Alea said. The first is Gandhi and the second is Randolph's group, the butler said as he recalled those people. Oh, right? I forgot that Dark Lord is the one who held the sins using monster potions. News about it is circulating but I think that they will face it soon. Alea said as she placed her index finger in her lower mouth. It's bad. Too bad. Soto was sitting inside the carriage with his comrades. They were all silent as all of them were thinking about yesterday night. Alea brought them to meet a woman. That woman had the power of divination. He was stunned when he heard that the woman had that kind of power. You can enter the room one by one. The power of Lady Fortuna is limited. The darkness is too strong for her so be careful. So who's going to enter the room first? Alea looked at them. Me. Brian raised his hand before he asked while tilting his head. But what should I do inside? Just follow Lady Fortuna's word and she will show you the right path of the brave ones. Alea answered his question. Brian entered the room and saw a beautiful woman with long black hair. The woman was wearing a black robe and her eyes were all white. It seems that she was blind. Hello, are you blind? Brian asked the obvious question as he sat in the vacant seat in front of the woman. The woman ignored him as she muttered words that Brian couldn't understand. What? I can't understand it. Speak in a language that I can understand. Brian said while scratching his cheek. He didn't know how to talk to this woman who was saying something that he couldn't understand. After a while, the woman lifted her head and she had a stunned expression on her face. She slowly opened her mouth and said in a coarse voice, Why you should be careful. You already meet them and they are going to notice you. Soon. But someone's changing everything. Be careful. Oh. So you know our language. That's great. I'm Brian Dagruel, an adventurer. Brian smiled and introduced himself. Everything changes. You shouldn't come here. It's bad just be careful on your way. The lady said in a deep tone before she coughed heavily. Soto was waiting outside the room along with his comrades. He couldn't hear and sense anything inside the room. He didn't have any idea what's happening but he felt bad about this. His instinct was telling him that it was a bad news. After a while, Brian came out of the room while scratching the back of his head. Oh man, I couldn't understand that lady. She's saying weird things about me. The next one who entered the room was Brando. Brando sat in front of the woman. He looked at her white eyes curiously. He didn't say anything as the woman was chanting some strange spell. He could feel the strange atmosphere of this room. After a while, the woman stopped chanting and said, It's the same. A small turtle without shell running around getting devoured by a black monster. Be careful. You should find some trustworthy friends. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Brando asked the woman. Just like the person before. Your destiny is shifting to the part that I couldn't see. You should have died but you survived so I don't know what will happen to you. The woman said. Person before? Brian. This woman is looking at our destiny. I couldn't trust her words but still, I couldn't refute her words. Brando thought. There's a lot of people that have divination ability but most of them were frauds. After Brando, Lumalia entered the room. She already had an idea of what's happening here because of Brando. She wasn't excited because she thought that it was the same as the last one that she met. Powers like this weren't trustworthy. It's full of holes but well it's not bad listening to some of it so she might get along with it. You'll receive everything from him. Money, fame, honor, and power. 
The woman suddenly said. Huh? Lumalia was confused as she tilted her head. Accept him or denied him. Kill him or save him. The woman said. What do you mean? Who's him? Lumalia asked. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not omniscient. My abilities are limited. It's just a clue from countless future paths. The woman said while shaking her head. It's okay. I didn't expect anything from coming here. Still, thank you for giving me some words. Lumalia stood up and bowed her head in front of the woman. She then left the room while thinking about the words of the woman. As soon as she left the room, she glanced at Soda. The first thing that came to her mind was him. Kill him or save him? Lumalia thought before she shook her head. Lin was the next person that entered the room. She's the type of person who believes in this kind of thing so she's quite excited, unlike the three people that enter first. I see. They don't have any idea that there were people in the past that have that kind of power. The power to look in the future. Soda thought while looking at their reaction. The information about that clan was lost and only a few people in this world know that they existed in the past. The information about 20,000 years ago was few. So it was natural that Lumalia and the rest didn't know about it. Soda got to know it because of cl.u.s.tear. He didn't even know about that clan if she didn't tell him about it. Inside the room, Lin was sitting while looking at the blind woman who was muttering words that she couldn't understand. Your end is near. You'll only suffer if you don't leave this world. The woman said. Lin tilted her head with a confused look on her face. My end is near? I will die. She thought. He needs you. Um. Are you talking about Soda? I don't know if he needs me. But if that's the case then I will gladly lend him my hand. Lin said as she smiled gently. She will not hesitate to help Soda if he was in trouble. You will not get anything from him. I know. I'm not asking for anything. I just want to stay beside him and that's enough for me. Lin said as she pressed her hand in her chest. She knows it herself that she's just an ordinary person with no special ability that's why. She's fine if she could just stand beside him. After Lin, Soda entered the room. The woman opened her eyes widely when Soda sat in front of her. Soda looked around the room. The atmosphere in this closed room was completely different. He felt countless eyes looking at him and it's making him shivered. There's some sort of invisible pressure around the woman. It was different from powerful people that he knew. Different from the pressure that the Sixth Circle officer emitted. You. Your darkness itself. I couldn't see anything but there are countless strings of fate around you connecting to the people of this world. The woman said with a surprised tone. I don't care about that. Future can be changed but I want to ask your name. You know Alea wouldn't tell me your name no matter how much I asked her. Soda said as he ignored the woman's words. Listening to Brian and Brando's words, the words of this woman were too vague. He already proved the future can be changed. He knew the future because of the game but it was slowly changing because of his actions. Me? You don't need to know someone as insignificant as myself. The woman said. TSK. Then, do you know the surname Ayashi? Soda clicked his tongue in annoyance and asked. I don't know such thing. I'm just a simple woman that has the power of divination. The woman shook her head. Useless. Can you give me a more detailed explanation like this country will be attacked by the Ten Great Bandit Gang? Soda asked her impatiently. He shouldn't expect to receive some information from her. No. The woman shook her head. Haze. Soda sighed. He wanted to interrogate the woman more but the pressure was getting heavier. Cough. Cough. The woman coughed heavily as blood poured out of her mouth. She loses her strength so Alice and Eugen didn't receive her divination. He didn't care about that woman's divination. It was too vague. Did she expect everyone to solve the mystery in her words? TSK. What a bad woman. He knew what will happen in the future so vague divination like that didn't interest him. TSK, she said that I'm the darkness itself. Well, it's not bad as my specialty is dark attribute spell. Soda comforted himself. The thing that bothered him was the pressure of that woman. He wanted to ask some questions to her but the pressure was getting heavy for him. You couldn't trust divination of that level. In the past, no one even looked at them unless they have the bloodline of the Ayashi clan in their veins. The Ayashi clan is the only person that could be trusted when it comes to divination. Saya said to him in his head, Is Ayashi clan really that trustworthy? Soda asked her. Yeah, their prediction is 100% accurate, but there are some rules and restrictions to their bloodline power. But I don't know about it as I'm a member of the Vajra race, not a member of the Ayashi clan. Saya replied to him. 100% accurate? That's insane. Soda was stunned. He couldn't believe that powers at all. That's why most of the people in this world didn't dare to offend them. Just like what you said before, the future can be changed. The Ayeshi clan uses their power to change the future of their enemies in the shadows. Saya said to him. That's terrifying. Soda was speechless. Yeah, it would bring him a great advantage if he could accurately predict the future movements of his enemies. He would be able to corner anyone. Just by thinking about it, Soda felt a chill in his spine. He doesn't want to face an opponent like that. Luckily, the Ayeshi clan was gone. 
But what's the restriction of their powers? He wanted to know it, but he lacks information. Let's forget about it. Soda said while shaking his head. Fine, I'll bring you in my inner consciousness. Saya nodded at him. Good. Soda nodded and was brought to Saya's inner consciousness. He continued learning the way of the sword under her tutelage. The group traveled for five days before they arrived in the Hebre kingdom and one day traveled towards the Ladro city. In these six days, Soda was training with Saya every time he had a time. He would only stop when he was going to eat or bandits were attacking their carriage. He managed to grasp the basics of her sword style and it leads him to learn the cross moon and crimson slash skill. These two skills were equipment skills of the Vajra sword. He could use it as long as he was using the Vajra sword but now, he could use this skill even when he was using another sword. He easily learned it because he was using this skill every time he fought. Under Saya's guidance, he grasps it in just five days in her inner consciousness. In fact, it was stronger than the equipment skill because he learned its essence. He couldn't level up the equipment skills but he could level it up if he learned it. That's why it was stronger than the equipment skills. At the moment, his, crimson slash, and, cross moon, skills were level 2. He would be able to level it up if he continued practicing it. Also, during his training with Saya his, sword mastery, under his, weapon mastery, skill has gone up. Sword mastery. Level 4, the most basic level of the swordsman. At this level, a person could be truly set a swordsman. Effect, plus 30% damage when using a sword. It was good, he was slowly approaching Eugen's level. He guessed that Eugen's, sword mastery, level was level 5. Soto was considering telling his comrades about this training method. He could bring them into Saya's inner consciousness to train so that they would be able to grow stronger quickly. It's bad if he's the only one who's strong in their legion. Lumalia immediately went to the Ladro Institute to report to Bargain that they've arrived while Soto went to the Lanny Corp to negotiate with Jimmy. He was also going to receive money from the loots that Jimmy bought to him. The two of them were sitting around a small table with tea prepared for them. You've gained a lot this time, Soda, Jimmy said with a laugh. Yeah, we even took down a third evolution monster. That's a great achievement. The name of Lanny Corp is slowly spreading, Soda said. I should thank you for it. Jimmy laughed happily. He received a lot of benefits this time. More and more people will know the Lanny Corporation. So what about your investigation about who published that news about me? Soda's tone turned serious as he changed the topic of their conversation. This is bad. We got information that various nobles are opposing you. I didn't have concrete evidence but I'm sure that they are the ones who manipulated the news. Jimmy said as he took a sip of his tea. Tell me about those nobles. I need to prepare something in case they got out of hand. There are seven families who are targeting you. Four are Baron families, two are Viscount, and one is Count. They are the ones who said that Soto was the one who killed Gregory. Jimmy explained to him their households one by one. They are angry at me for opposing and fighting a noble like them. They felt that they will lose their face if the person who took down a noble is roaming around the kingdom without getting punished. Soda sighed deeply. What a narrow-minded people they can't hurt my other classmates who help Lumalia because some of them are sons and daughters of nobles like them. Vedredo household was a Viscount family. Their head was Gregory Vedredo but now Gregory was gone. He died at the hands of an unknown person. Jimmy just looked at Soda. He didn't say anything as he watched him process the information that he gave. Soda closed his eyes as he contemplated what he should do. Should I bear my fangs to those seven families? They are troublesome. He thought but he quickly put down this idea. The combined power of the seven noble families was no joke. If he wasn't careful he would face an army of C rank and dozens of B rank. If it grew worse, then those heads will join but he highly doubted it. Those people were as strong as Gregory and some of them were stronger than him. It was easy for them to crush him at their current strength. They didn't do it because they were wary about the stance of the Ladro Institute. But if he let them do what they want then they would prevent him from establishing his legion. The festival was coming and the principal of the Ladro Institute was going to leave the city for the meeting of the Grand Tournament. There's still time so he would train the Dark Oculus to become a brank so that those people wouldn't be able to pressure him. In case, a war occurred he would be able to fight back. After a while, a grin formed on Soda's face as he opened his eyes and looked at Jimmy. He asked, are you willing to bet on me? Jimmy was taken aback when he saw Soda's expression. He warily asked, bet on? Me, no, are you willing to bet on my Dark Oculus Legion? Soda's grin grew wider. What do you plan to do? Jimmy frowned as he asked with a serious expression. I'm going to crush those noble families. I'm going to wage war with them using the Legion that I will create. Soda said as he looked at Jimmy intensely. W wait. You will form your own Legion. And you want to fight those nobles openly. Jimmy was dumbfounded when he heard what Soda wanted to do. Are you out of your mind? I will handle them. You just need to support me, no. You need to bring the entire Lanny Corp to support me in establishing my legion as I'm sure that those people would stop me. Soda said to him. 
You can leave the war to me. It's my specialty, after all. I can't make a decision alone. I have to talk to other executives. Jimmy said, it's fine. I'll give you a week. After that, I will establish my legion without your support or not. I hope you don't regret your decision at that time. Soda said as he stood up and left the room. Soda didn't become a commander in mechanic country for nothing. He was knowledgeable about war and special about the noble war. Should he say, legion war. That's the only way that the kingdom will permit fighting inside its territory. He already calculated the time of the establishment and how those nobles will react. He will make the first move and will surprise them. He he I will take everything from you damn nobles. A group of people wearing black cloak arrived at the gigantic kingdom, the huge country at the corner of the continent. All of them were gazing at the kingdom. Hmm? What should we do in this continent? One of the people asked his comrades. We're going to take back the bloodstone, Pavoni. Someone answered his question. I see. Oh, right. I forgot that the group who was tasked to collect the bloodstone failed. Pavoni said in a tired tone. They failed. All of them died. And the one who prevents them from completing their mission was the Hebrew kingdom so we're here to finish their mission. Someone said. TSK. Those six circle officers are worthless. They are making us work like this. Pavoni clicked his tongue in frustration. He actually didn't want to come here but he had no choice since it was the order of the sins. Don't complain, Pavoni. We're all here because of the order. A deep voice sounded. TSK. Don't get C.O.C.KY just because you have a blessing, Yavn. Pavoni shouted. The one named Yavn ignored Pavoni. He looked at the group of people around him and said, We're going to complete this mission no matter what. Stake your life and we're going to massacre everyone who got in our way us. We have 25 seven circle officers here so we don't have to worry. Also, five of the seven circle officers received blessings from the gluttony sin. With this much force, we could even burn down a country in this continent. A feminine voice echoed in the area. Yevon looked at the woman and said, don't let your guard down. You know the every large country has a god protecting it. That's one of the requirements to become a large country in this place. Then, what about the great country? The woman asked in a seductive tone. I don't know but a great country is as powerful as our organization. They are the reason why we couldn't roam in this continent. Yevon said. All the upper echelons of the great country are god and deities. Our target this time are in the large country not great country so there's no need to bother about it, Pavoni said. At least we need to a plan. We can't just go there and attack them. We don't have an eight circle with us. Yevon said at Pavoni while glancing at him. We have ten small bases in this continent and one of them is close to this country. We'll go and gather their force. The woman said as she turned her head and looked at the gigantic country. Soda and the rest attend the supplementary class in the institute after they returned. They needed it because they were gone for almost one month. The topic of the class was about the nature energy also called as mana. Soda listened attentively as this was one of the lessons that he wanted to hear. Plus, Bargain was the one who's explaining to them. Bargain explained to them how mana affects the things in this world and their uses. He also connected it to combat arts and spells. Combat arts was different from spells. It was martial arts. A person could use any combat arts without mana but they could also use mana along with it to enhance its power. The spell couldn't be trained like combat arts. The things that matter the most in any spell was the magic circle. Without a magic circle, people wouldn't be able to cast a spell. Bargain taught them different magic circles. All spells were classified into four tiers and each tier was divided into four ranks. Tier 1 spell was the most basic spell in the whole universe. The magic circle of this spell wasn't complicated and it was easy to build it using mana. Usually, the color of the magic circle of tier 1 spell was yellow but there was some occurrence in which the caster used higher mana so the color changes based on the color of the caster's mana. It was the same for the other tiers. The mana was originally colorless but it changes the moment it entered a person's body. It changes based on the affinities of the person to the elements. Soda's mana was color black but it changed when he used Saya's energy which was color red. Tier 2 spell was the spell that was stronger than tier 1. The magic circle of this spell was color orange. To build this magic circle, a person needed an amount of mana higher than the tier 1 spell. Then, the tier 3 spell. It was a powerful spell clearly different from the two tiers below. The offensive spell of this tier was powerful enough to wipe out an entire city. In some cases where the mana density was low, it could potentially destroy anything. All the sub-world forbids anyone from using this level of spell as it could demolish everything on the surface of a huge continent. Its color was red. Lastly, the tier 4 spell which was terrifying. The energy required to build its magic circle was tremendous. The weakest tier 4 spell was still 10 times stronger than the tier 3 spell. It was called the destroyer of the world and its magic circle was color white. A person couldn't build a higher tier magic circle without learning the lower tiers. Because the foundation of the tier 2 magic circle was the same as the tier 1 spell and the foundation of the tier 3 magic circle was the tier 2 magic circle. 
Each tier was divided into four ranks, the inferior rank, mid-rank, high rank, and the super rank. Bargan also said that the power of each spell varied on the power of the caster. If he, a powerful person, used the tier 1 spell, fireball, then it could produce a power rivaling that of the tier 2 spell. But there was a limitation to it if he carelessly poured a large amount of mana into the tier 1 magic circle then it would explode. Also, there was a limitation to how much tier 1 magic circle can hold mana. That's why it was important for them to train how to properly control their mana. Soda learned a lot of things just by listening to Bargain's lecture. After the class, Soda gathered everyone in his house. He was going to tell them important things. Lumalia placed a thick pile of paper on the table in front of them. I've already done everything. We just need to apply for the change of our party to a legion. Also, the headquarters of our legion was needed. My house will become our headquarters. I'll hire some people to renovate this house. All of you will stay here. Soda said as he picked up the papers and looked at it one by one. Lumalia really did a great job in completing this. Eugen opened one of his eyes and looked at Soda before asking. So when you're going to pass the request, you're already a B rank so there's no problem in it. Yeah, I'm going to pass the request to the guild next week. Also, we're going to open our legion for recruitment that day. The maximum person that can join the lowest rank legion was 50. Next week? Why? We could already pass the request today, right? Brando asked him with a confused expression. Yeah, but I'm concerned about the nobles in this kingdom. Soda nodded at him. Hmm. So that's how it is. The news about you is problematic. We don't know how the deadly sins will react but, Eugen understood his concern immediately. What can you do in this week? If you pass the request next week then it's the same. Three days will be needed before we received an answer from the guild if they approve of creating our legion. Also, if somehow the nobles couldn't prevent us from creating the legion then I'm sure that the legion under them will wage war to us. Yeah, the nobles will not be able to prevent us from creating our legion no matter what, Soda said to him in a serious tone. How sure are you? Eugen asked as he looked at Soda's eyes. I'm 100% sure. Those damn nobles will not be able to stop me. Soda replied to him. I see. Then, I don't need to worry about it. So tell us what we need to do. I'm sure you have a plan in your mind, right? Eugen leaned his back on the walls while Alephi appeared on his shoulders. I want you to increase your strength as fast as possible in this week. If possible I want you to reach the level of B rank. What? One week is impossible. What could we do in just one week? Brando was surprised when he heard that Soda wanted them to reach B rank in just one week. Some people couldn't even reach rank in their lifetime and Soda just said that they have to reach rank. You are all talented people. All the students of the Ladro Institute have the potential so you don't need to worry about it. You can reach it. I'm sure that I can reach your level of power in just one week but I'll try my best, Soda. This is challenging, Brian said with an excited expression. Yeah, one week isn't enough. That's why I have this, Soda said as he placed the Vajra sword on the table. What's that? Brian looked at the sword. That's a sword, you know? Brando said as he nudged Brian's shoulder. I know that you know, Brian said in a loud voice. What do you mean, Soda? Lumalia asked as she looked at the sword before turning her eyes to Soda. She didn't know how his sword connected to their topics. Soda hesitated for a bit before he opened his eyes. He decided to tell them one of his secrets. Everyone opened their eyes widely as they listened to Soda's explanation about the sword. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. He explained to them the time difference inside the sword and the real world. What? So this sword has that ability. Eugen was shocked as he gazed at the sword intently. Yeah, that's why I said that we could pull it off. My plan to raise your strength in just one week. Soda nodded at him. Eugen took a deep breath to calm himself. After a while, he opened his mouth and said, I guess that's the reason why your growth is so fast. He recalled that Soda already has that sword the moment he entered the institute. Hey, that's not it. Well, I'll leave it to his imagination. Soda thought as he smiled at Eugen. Who? I want a sword like this too. Brian shouted as he stretched out his hands towards the sword but Soda quickly placed the Vajra sword back in his waist. That's. Soda turned his head and saw Alice was still looking at the sword with wide eyes. It seems that this ability surprises her. It's not bad to look at her surprised expression. Alice was stunned as she knew what it meant to have that kind of ability. She looked around and understood that everyone didn't have an idea what it means to have that ability. That ability was only from a god-level powerhouse. She knew it too well. From Soda's explanation, she could guess that world was inner consciousness but Soda was not at that level where he could alter the time in his inner consciousness. She guessed that there was a god inside that sword. Also, the time ratio was 1 to 5. It means that the god inside the sword was a powerful being among the gods. The newly formed god could only alter the time in their inner consciousness to the ratio 1 to 2. She remembered that her teacher before have a ratio of 1 to 3 in her inner consciousness. Still, it couldn't match her father. 
The time ratio in her father's inner consciousness was 115. He was the most powerful being that she knew in this world. Her father could realize his inner consciousness in the real world. If an ordinary person received his blessing then that person could match the B rank of this continent. So we're going to try to reach B rank using this ability. I hope you try your best, Soda said to them and they nodded at him in response to his words. Their eyes were filled with determination to support him. If they grow stronger then it would greatly help Soda in fighting those damn nobles. I will go to the guild with Eugen, Lin, and Alice. They have to pass the C rank adventurer first, Lumalia said to Soda. I'll leave it to you. Just make it quick and we'll start training right away. Soda paused for a moment before he added, Tomorrow, we'll use our points in Institute to redeem spells or combat arts. Everything that could increase our strength is good. Understood. Lumalia stood and looked at the three, Let's go and finish it quickly. It can't be helped. Eugen sighed as he stood up. Oh okay. I'll do my best today. Lin said. Alice followed them without saying anything. She was glancing at the sword from time to time. She was curious about the sword. After they left, Soda stood up and looked at Brian and Brando. They were the only ones that were left in this room. This room is too small. Let's go down in the yard. Soda said to them as he exited the room. Oh. oh. It's training time, Brian shouted as he followed Soda downstairs. Brando simply followed them. Soda, Brian, and Brando arrived in the yard of Soda's house. The two didn't know what they should do so they looked at Soda intently. Sit down. Soda instructed them as he also sat down on the ground before waving his hand. Ohm. Ten black balls appeared above him and it flew on top of the three people. Brando and Brian looked at it. They were about to ask him about this but, boom. The gravity increased several times. The black balls created a gravity field around them. It will try to push down any objects or creatures that entered inside this field. This gravity field will strengthen our body while we learn combat arts or spells in the sword, Soda said to the two. He felt as if one huge boulder of rock was pressed on his shoulder. The weight was equal to one ton. Every fiber of his muscles was being pushed down on the ground. The grass around them was being crushed on the ground because of the intense gravity around them. The strong gravity was damaging the soil and grass but Soda didn't care about it. Oh, Yuko come here. You'll train with us. Soda said as he saw Yuko walking on the corner. Yuko tilted her head and she entered the gravity field. Her steps created a small crater on the ground because of her weight and the heavy gravity. It took her a few dozen seconds before she arrived beside Soda. It was hard to move under the heavy gravity field. Then, Soda pulled out the Vajra and said, Place your hands on the sword. I'll bring you to the other place. Brian and Brando followed his instruction. Yuko did the same thing as them. She placed her paws on the tip of the sword. Ohm. Suddenly, they found themselves in the middle of black space with countless stars glittering around it. Brian and Brando looked around in amazement. This was their first time coming to a place like this. The inner unconscious of a former god powerhouse was different from mortals. Stop dawdling around. We're here to train not to play. Soda said as he clapped his hand to gather everyone's attention. Saya didn't want to show herself to the other people except for Soda. She was simply observing them in the dark while communicating with Soda if he needed something. After all, this place was her inner consciousness so Soda couldn't do anything. Can you give us a little bit of energy? Soda said to Saya. Their consciousness was only in this place but it's somehow connected to their real body that's why if they died here their real body would take damage. Since their consciousness was only here, they don't have energy. So Soda had to ask Saya to let them access the energy in this place. There's still a lot of things Soda didn't know about God level powerhouse. Yeah, I've placed a little bit amount of energy in your body. You will not be able to feel it but if you concentrate you will be able to sense that tiny amount of energy. Train yourself to control that energy it will help all of you control your mana well. Saya said to him. Okay, thanks. Soda replied as he closed his eyes. After a few minutes, he opened his eyes. It's true. The amount of energy inside his body was too little. He explained to Brando and Brian about the energy and told them to practice controlling it. Are you sure, Soda? I couldn't sense anything. Brando asked him as he couldn't sense the energy inside his body after concentrating for a few minutes. Yeah, I already sense it. Also, you're not a mage so you're not sensitive to mana as you hardly practice it. So it's understandable that you can't sense it. Soda said to Brando. He then said, I'm going out for A but to wait for others. Okay, Brando nodded and he looked at Brian who didn't respond. Brian's concentration was on another level. Even if Soda shouted Brian wouldn't even hear it. Soda smiled and he contacted Saya saying that he wanted to leave her inner consciousness. In the real world, Soda opened his eyes. Who this will be a tough week. He muttered as he stood up with great effort. The gravity field was still around the area. After an hour, Lumalia and the rest returned and the three successfully became a C-rank adventurers. If they reached B-rank in the training then Soda would let them take the B-rank exam. Their ranks should be close to him. After all, 
They were going to be an executives in the Legion so their adventurer's rank should be higher than the newcomer. Brando and Brian are already there. Soda guided them and they went inside Saya's inner consciousness. One week had passed since the group trained in the inner consciousness of Soda. They were confident in their newly gained strength. This training couldn't be done without the help of a god-level powerhouse. This was their huge advantage compared to the other people in this world. They could access an inner consciousness of a god. It was a privilege that only a few people in this world could receive. Even those great nobles didn't have something like this. The group completed their preparations and right now they were going to move to the next part of the plan. They had to pass the request for forming a legion. The headquarters of the Dark Legion was completed. Soda hired some experts to renovate his house to a five-story building. Today, this will be our home, Soda said while looking at the building in front of him. He used most of his money in creating this building. He also bought barrier stones to set up a protective shield around this building. Oh, I don't have to stay in my small house, Brian said with excitement in his voice. He was thrilled to live in a big building like this one. Yay. I'll live with everyone. I will not be left alone in Sister Mila's room. CL.U.S.Tear was excited for a different reason. You know CL.U.S.Tear, we're students so we have to go to institute and you will be left alone here, Brando said to CL.U.S.Tear. At least, Yuko is here, CL.U.S.Tear replied as she stuck out her tongue. Let's enter and pick our room, Soda said as he stepped forward and entered the building. Lumalia and the rest looked at each other before they entered the building. As soon as they stepped inside the building, they saw a huge and wide hall. Quest boards were placed on the corner of the hall but it didn't have a quest in it yet. Round tables were placed around the hall and there's the reception at the side of the hall. It looks like the hall of the Adventurer's Guild. Stalls were placed around and Soda planned to sell potions and other necessities using these stalls. They went up to the second floor. The second floor was the floor for the newcomers who want to stay in this building. It was reserved for them. There were 15 rooms on this floor in total. The third floor was the same as second floor. It has the same purpose too. The group went to the fourth floor. This floor looks like the same as the first floor but it was different. The floor was divided into three parts. The first parts were the rooms while the second part or the middle part was the hall and lastly, the third part was the reception and treasury. This floor was for the high-ranking members of the Legion. Be rank and above. Of course, there was an exception to it and they were the original members of the Dark Oculus, the founding members. Soda told Lumalia how he wants to establish a point system in his legion and she did everything on her own. Actually, the plan of this entire building was her idea. She thoroughly planned this building. The point system was the same as the institute. The adventurers would complete a quest and every time they completed a quest they will gain points. They could exchange it for various potions or anything inside the treasury be it mana fruits, weapons, spell books, combat arts, or armors. Anything as long as it exists inside the treasury, they could exchange it for points. At first, she rejected his idea of creating a point system as they wouldn't gain anything from it but Soda insisted that he wanted it so she could only follow him. She wouldn't understand him if he said that he wanted to receive points from his system. This point system was to encourage the newcomer to complete a quest so that Soda would receive points from his system every time they finished a quest. It's a win-win situation for him. Material things exchange for points in his system. The fifth floor was the same as second and third floor. This floor was also for high-ranking officers and the rooms of the founding members were here. Soda's room was also here. Everyone picked their room on the fifth floor. After that, they brought their things and start arranging it inside their private room. Okay, everything's complete now. We just need to pass the request. Soda clapped as he gathered everyone's attention. Let's head to Adventurer's Guild, Lumalia suggested. Today was the day that they will request to change their party to a legion so they had to make it quick. Right, Eugen nodded. Why yeah? I hope everything will work out, Lin said in a concerned tone. Don't worry, nothing can stop us, Soda smiled at her as he assured her that everything's according to plan. I'm ready, we can go there anytime, Alice said to them. Her attire was that of purple grade leather armor and white tight jeans of the same grade, brown colored boots and silver color arm guards. Sure, let's go, Soda nodded as he turned his head and looked at the object that was wrapped in bandages. He needed this thing to make sure that nothing stops him. Also, his contract with Jimmy was approved the other executives of the Lanny Corporation, decided to support him. He didn't know what Jimmy did but it was a great work making everyone support him. Well, it doesn't matter if the Lanny Corporation supported him or not. He still has a lot of backup plans and one of these was this object. The group went to the Adventurer's Guild. Everyone from the Dark Oculus was here. As soon as they entered the Guild, they gathered the attention of everyone's eyes. Oh, it's Soda. I haven't seen you for a few weeks. Oi. Oi. Soda, I heard that you're a B rank now. Where did you go? Oi. Didn't you know that he went to Eternal Empire? For real? Yeah. 
Soda ignored those voices as he walked towards the reception. He opened his mouth and asked the receptionist, Can you call the guildmaster? I wanted to talk to him. Please, wait for a moment, sir. The receptionist said in a polite tone before she left. Hmm? I thought that you're going to pass the request. Eugen asked Soda. Yes, I'm going to give it to the guildmaster. Don't worry about me, just focus on your exam. Soda replied to Eugen. After a few minutes, the receptionist came back and called Soda. She guided him to a room on the second floor of the building. Eugen, Brando, Brian, Alice, Lumalia, and Lynn were left at the reception. They still have other things to accomplish to complete their goals. Soda could leave them alone without worrying about them. They've grown stronger in the past week. They were much stronger compared to the time when they subdued the white jade spider. They were different from before. Don't worry, we'll finish it with a bang, Brian said confidently. Soto was in a room alone with a middle-aged man with short silver-colored hair. The man had sharp features and he was exuding the pressure of a veteran warrior that fought countless fights. This man was none other than the guildmaster of the Adventurer's Guild of Ledro City, Francis Graveview. He was a B rank when he was an active adventurer 10 years ago but he stopped exploring dungeons when he reached rank. After that, he took the role of guildmaster of this branch. I want to congratulate you for becoming a B rank, Francis said to him. He was observing the young man in front of him. He heard various rumors about him but it was his first time seeing the famed Soda personally. The young man who fought and defeated Lord Gregory, the head of the Vedredo family. The man who saved the first dukedom from destruction. The man who held the six circle officers of the deadly sins before the flame master arrived. The man who subdued a third evolution white jade spider using a party full of C rank. His achievement in battle was so high that the Ladro Institute valued him to the same level as Yanagishina. Right at this moment, that young man was officially a B rank adventurer, reaching the realm of the strong fighter. A fighter who was strong enough to join a party of B rank to subdue a third evolution monster. Normally, that was the case. A party of Brank Adventurer would be the one to subjugate a third evolution monster but Soda defied the impossible. This was the first time that this ever happened in the history of Adventurer's Guild. A 15C Rank Adventurer taking down a full-grown third evolution monster called White Jade Spider was impossible if he was to say it. Thanks, that was nothing, Soda replied in a polite tone. So can I know the reason why do you want to meet me, the Guildmaster? Francis asked Soda as his tone changed into a serious one. His expression too became fierce while looking at Soda. Hmm. How should I say it? I have come here to make a deal with you. Soda grinned widely. Deal? Francis asked him as he raised his eyebrows. He then said, tell me about it. You see, I'll create my legion today, Soda said. What? Hmm. You're a B rank right now so you must have thought that it's better if you upgrade your party to a legion. Francis was surprised at first but he quickly regained his posture as he found this thing natural. You must have rejected defactions, right? Yes, I rejected them. I want to create my own legion. Soda replied to him. There were several factions in the Adventurer's Guild and Hunter was one of those factions. Hunter was a faction in the Adventurer's Guild that was focused on taking monster subjugation quests. Their rewards were 10% higher if they took that type of quest. They were an expert in taking down monsters. They also possess knowledge about the habits and abilities of different types of monsters in the world. Currently, the Explorer, Hunter, and the Sweeper were the most dominant faction in the Adventurer's Guild. The Explorer was an expert in exploring dungeons in the world while the Sweeper was an expert in killing. Hunting down bandits and bounty criminals was their expertise. Only, B rank and above were the ones who could join this type of faction. The world of B rank adventurer was entirely different from Crank and below. There were still a lot of adventurers that rejected joining the factions and create their legions. It was especially the case for those people who were under the wings of noble families. You will create your legion so how it is connected to the deal? I don't think that there's any problem with you creating a legion. I'm sure that you've already completed the requirements. Francis asked him as he was confused why Soda wanted to make a deal with him. You know, sometimes fame can invite trouble and I'm experiencing it right now. Some of the nobles in the kingdom still thought that I'm the one who killed Gregory. Maybe, they are not mad because I killed him but they are mad that I have the guts to confront nobles. Soda explained to Francis his situation. I see. I understand everything. I don't think I have the reason to help you regarding this matter. They will use their connection to prevent you informing your legion so you have no other choice but to join the factions. Francis said to him. It's true that if Soto wanted to join a faction in the guild, then those nobles wouldn't be able to stop him. Those large factions didn't even care about the thoughts of nobles in this kingdom. In fact, they would welcome a young man like Soto with open arms. That's why I wanted to make a deal with you. You will use your connection to prevent those nobles from meddling with the affairs of Adventurer's Guild in this kingdom. Soda said as he took out the object which was wrapped in bandages on his back. He placed it on top of the table before slightly pushing it towards Francis. Take a look at this. Francis looked at Soda before focusing his attention on the object in front of him. 
He stretched out his hand and removed the bandages. What he saw was an exquisite bow. A bow that was made in rare materials was presented before his eyes. This? Francis was shocked as he turned his eyes to Soda. That's right. That bow is an orange-grade weapon. I also know that you use a bow as your weapon so I will give this to you if you help me. Soda smiled as he explained to Francis. He then raised his index finger and said, That's not all. I will give you to three mana fruits if you successfully prevent those nobles from meddling. Everything was set in stone. Now, it's up to Francis if he wanted to take the present before his eyes. Orange-grade weapon was rare even in a large country such as this one. Only large families and great people have this kind of weapon. This grade of weapon could already become a national treasure of some small country. Now, I wanted to hear your answer as I will pass the request today after this meeting. Soda grinned widely as he looked at Francis eagerly. I don't think those nobles would stop even if I stopped them from meddling, Francis said. Yes, they will not stop and I'm sure of it. They will bring down the legion that I will create as soon as possible but that's within my expectations. Do you think I will just let them do that even though I know that they will attack me? No, I will not them do what they want so you just have to complete what I want and I'll handle my own things. Soda said with a wide grin on his face. Also, aside from the troubles, fame can bring you some benefits. I've gained various achievements through my own efforts so I'm sure that a lot of adventurers would want to join the legion that I will create. I see. Francis nodded as he looked down at the orange-grade bow. After a while, he gazed at Soda's eyes and said, Fine, I'll help so don't forget what we talk about here. Yes, I'm the type of person that always keeps his words. I will sure to bring you three mana fruits after I created my legion. Soda said as he stood up. Francis just looked at Soda's back without saying anything. After Soda left, he sighed. What a terrifying person. I'm sure that he had another plan if I didn't accept his condition. He felt that Soda didn't care if he accepted his deal or not. Soda was just making sure so that an unexpected situation wouldn't occur. Suddenly, a cat person slammed the door open. Guildmaster. Francis looked at the cat person with annoyance. What is it? He asked. Soda went back to the Hall of Adventurers Guild. There's an uproar in the entire guild. Everyone was shocked as they murmured to each other. He smiled as he knew the cause of this commotion. It seems that you three successfully passed the examination. He said as he looked at his three comrades. Yeah, it's not a problem to me, Brian said as he patted his chest. We could do this much. Eugen simply said. Alice just looked at Soda. Brian, Eugen, and Alice easily passed the advancement exam and successfully became B-rank adventurers. The three of them were sure that they reached the realm of B-rank so Soda let them take the advancement exam. With another three B-rank adventurers in his legion, Soda was sure that the nobles would hesitate to attack him. This will give him an opportunity to initiate an attack instead of the one being attacked. Brando, Lin, and Lumalia didn't take the quest as their level of power were slightly lower. Also, their powers were just for supporting to they will have a problem if they take the exam. The exam in this branch was to show everyone the destructive power of the B-rank by destroying hard blocks of metal in one shot so this exam put those support class at disadvantage. Those blocks of metals were used to create the tough walls of the city. It was also the basic materials for creating purple-grade shields and armors. Brando was a great tanker. He could even take an attack from a third evolution monster to some degree but he didn't have great attack power so he couldn't destroy the hard blocks of metal in one shot. This was the reason why some of the adventurers went to another branch to see if the advancement exam there was suitable for their class. Good. I'm satisfied. I've also finished my talk with the guildmaster. Soda said to them while ignoring the gazes of the people around them. He then went to the receptionist and requested to create a legion. This also shocked the surrounding adventurers. What? Soda wanted to create a legion? Damn. His legion is going to become a strong one as three of his party members just become B-rank adventurers. I think I'm going to join his legion. Yeah, if we join now then we would become a high-ranking officer in the future once the legion grows stronger. I think we should wait for his requirements. I'm sure that Soda wouldn't let anyone join his legion just like the other legions. Yeah, at rank 1 only 50 people can join his legion so it's first come first serve. Damn. It will cause a ruckus knowing that Soda will create his legion. After talking to the receptionist, Soda left the guild with his comrades. He was sure that this news will reach the ears of those nobles. He had three days before he knew if the adventurer's guild approve him in establishing his legion. But he didn't need to worry about it. He made various plans to make it happen. Next, is the publicity of the point system in our legion, Soda muttered with a smirk. Three days had passed since Soda passed the request to the Adventurer's Guild. Today will be the day whether the guild approves of him creating his legion or not. But Soda wasn't worried about it. He already prepared various plans so if it didn't work out then the influence of those nobles was greater than he imagined. Maybe, he underestimated them too much but Soda's policy was to overestimate his opponents, not the opposite. In these past three days, the members of the Dark Oculus dominated the entire ranking of the first year in Ladro Institute. 
they outclassed all other students in their year level. They accumulated hundreds of points so that they could redeem various spells and skills in the institute. After the class, the group gathered in Soda's house. No, all of them were living here, so it was their house. There's no need to worry about it. My plan is perfect, Soda said as he assured his comrades. Lumalia entered the room with cups of coffee in her hands. She placed it on the tables, and Soda quickly took it. Good. Soda nodded with a satisfied expression as he took a sip of coffee. He then placed down the cup of coffee in his hand before he said, "We'll place recruitment post in front of our base. We just have to recruit anyone, regardless of their ranks." Then. Are you not worried that our legion would become full of frank adventurers? Brando asked Soda. Nope. There's no need to worry. The rules of our legion will put them out of our legion. They wanted benefits because of the system points, right? So I will make them work hard for it. Soda said before he glanced at Lumalia. Lin, Eugen, Alice, Brando, Cl. U. S. Tear, and Brian turned their heads to Lumalia. Ahem. I will explain the rules. Lumalia said as she forcefully coughed because she was slightly embarrassed when everyone looked at her suddenly. The first rule is that no one should disobey the words of the commander of the legion. Ordinary members shouldn't complain to the words of the high-ranking officer. Also, if they have some complaints about the other members, they should consult the vice commander. The second rule is that the members of the legion should complete the quest quota, or else they will be kicked out of the legion. F-rank members of the legion should complete seven F-rank quests a week. E-rank should complete five E-rank quests a week. D rank should complete three D rank quests a week. C rank should complete one C rank quest a week. B rank should complete one B rank quest a month. This rule will be updated when rank and above join the legion. Lumalia paused for a moment after he explained the two rules. She then added, "The third rule is that no one could reject if the party leader wanted you to join the expedition. The expedition is a must in this legion, so no one could reject it. The fourth rule: no one should fight in the headquarters. You will be punished heavily by the legion commander." They should settle it in the arena on the back of the building. Everyone listened to Lumalia's words. They imprinted the rules in their mind. The legion commander is me, and the vice commander is Lumalia. So you better not call me captain anymore. Soda said to them as he raised his index finger. What? Soda, I wanted a cool position too. Brian complained loudly. Ha ha! Don't worry. The founding members of the legion would have a high position. After all, this party is the main force of our legion. The others are just extras. Soda laughed lightly as he explained to Brian. Ding! Everyone turned their head as they heard the ring of the doorbell. Soda looked at Lumalia and she shook her head in response. She didn't know about it. Oh? Maybe it's the Adventurers Guild. Brian said with an excited expression. No, the guild will not come to our doorstep. We're not that special to have that kind of treatment. Lumalia shook her head. Okay, I'll take a look. Brando said as he stood up and left. Do you think it's from the Lanny Corp? Eugen asked Soda. Nope. We've reached an agreement, so they will not bother us until we publicize our legion. The condition they put for helping me is that I should reserve ten seats in my legion for their people. Soda explained to Eugen and everyone. He picked his cup and the coffee. Who's so good? I should buy a coffee shop sometimes. He exhaled with a satisfied expression. The grand tournament will begin. What do you plan to do with it? Alice suddenly asked him a question. Grand tournament? Hmm. I still haven't decided if I wanted to join or not, but I recommend all of you to join the tournament. It will boost our reputation if you ranked high in that tournament. Soda replied to her, "If he received a quest to participate in the grand tournament, then he will join. I will join that tournament. I wanted to know how strong the people from the other institutions." Brian said as he raised both of his hands in the air. "It's simple. They are strong, but not that stronger than Yanagi Shina." Soda said to him. Then he looked at Alice, Brian, and Eugen. If you want to participate, then the elimination round will begin in the next ten days. I see. If I have a chance, I will participate in the tournament. Alice nodded. After a while, Brando entered the room. He looked at Brian and said, "Brian, you have a letter." Me? Brian was confused as he received the letter in Brando's hand. Lumalia, Lin, Eugen, and Alice simply looked at the letter in Brian's hand while Soto was confused about it. He gazed at the letter and saw a seal of a noble household. Noble? Soto asked. Why? Yes. Brian knew the princess of the Venreda family and the princess of the Suplivan family. Lin replied to him, "It seems that everyone here knew this information except him." What? How? Soto was shocked when he heard her words. You know, when you were in coma after fighting in the Ibish village, Brian, together with us, took a quest. We incidentally saved the two of them while doing the quests. No, in fact, Brian was the one who saves them. Lumalia explained. That's an event. Soto muttered as he held his head with both of his hands. That F. Ker Brian. He was hogging all those quests to himself. First was Princess Alea, now another two princesses. 
If he was in Brian's position then, he would be able to perfectly utilize it to get closer to those people who have high influence. Randolph was sitting inside a dark room while having a tea. He had a faint smile on his face as he took a sip of his tea. What a wonderful day it is. That soda keeps entertaining me in this kingdom. The genius that this kingdom have. He said in a low voice as he looked outside through the window. So you wanted to fight him, master? Suddenly, a voice asked him from behind. Yes, I have a dream. I wanted to fight those geniuses. I wanted to know if an artificial one like me can keep up with them. Randolph said while taking a glance at the man that just arrived. I see. But don't forget our goals. You must get it no matter what. The man said to Randolph. No worries, I will complete it, no, we will complete to break free from the hands of those bastards. They thought that they could control me. They are dreaming. I will not let anyone control me. At the end of his sentence, Randolph's tone changed. He was agitated while thinking about those people who controlled his life. Yeah, me too. Master, we've been oppressed for a long time. Your parents entrusted me to protect you so I will do everything that you wish. The man said to him. But what can we do? Those people are the ones that created me. Until now, the parasites are still trying to gain control of my body. Randolph sighed deeply. So when will we execute our plan? The man asked Randolph. Soon, I can feel it. The right time to execute our plan will come soon. Remember, the words of the divinator in Eternal Empire? Randolph replied as he looked at his reflection on the tea. Yes, she said that we will get an opportunity to accomplish our goals this year. It's up to us if we could see that opportunity or not. Yes, now thinking about the things that happened in the past few months. I could finally put the puzzle together so I have an idea of what's that opportunity she's talking about. Randolph said as a grin appeared on his face. The man gazed at Randolph's back with a worried expression. He knew that Randolph was suffering but he didn't have the power to help him. Soda looked at Brian intensely. He was wondering why Brian was always the one who encountered this kind of thing. The same thing happened to cl.u.s.tear. He thought that he only met cl.u.s.tear because he was with Brian. This person who always triggered this kind of event. W what? Brian subconsciously took a step back when he saw the look on Soda's face. Soda sighed and patted Brian's shoulder. He said, the next time you took a quest you must always inform me. I can't leave good things in your hand alone. E.A. S. Soda, do you like princesses? Lynn asked as she misunderstood what Soda meant. Yeah, I love meeting them. Soda nodded with a serious expression then he noticed that everyone was looking at him with a dumbfounded expression. A. Everyone opened their eyes widely as their jaw almost reached the floor because of Soda's answer. You have a princess fetish? Damn, now I understand. That's some high settings you've got there. Brando nodded in understanding. Lumalia and Lynn simply couldn't believe what they heard from Soda's mouth. H. He actually said that he likes princesses. Isn't that mean that he was jealous that two princesses have taken an interest in Brian? I didn't think that you're the type of person that likes princesses. I thought that you only want to get strong like Brian. Eugen muttered while looking at Soda. I see. Sometimes, I saw Soda grinning without any reason and I found it weird. But I guess he must be thinking about a princess. Even Alice joined the conversation. You've said something that you shouldn't have said. Saya said to him. Hmm? Soda rubbed his chin and thought about what he said. He placed himself in his their position and understood why were they looking at him with that face. I see. I understand your concern everyone but I think that it's different from what you're thinking. Soda said to them calmly. You already admit it, Soda. It's okay, I sometimes hope that I meet some beautiful princess and rescue them like a knight in shining armor. Brando said while nodding his head. Brando, don't place me together with you. I'm just thinking that it would be great if I could get close to a princess and used her influence. Soda replied to him. Boy, that's worse, Soda. Brando pointed his finger at Soda. He then heard a small voice behind him. Ah, it must be great to become a princess. He saw that it was Lin imagining about her being a princess and Soda rescuing her from bandits. Snap out of it, Lin. Boy, Lin, didn't you hear it? Soda just wants to use the influence of the princess. He's the worse. After a few minutes of hard work, Brando managed to calm everyone. He sighed and said, Brian, have you read the letter? No. Brian shook his head. Okay, give it to me Brian. I'll read it for you. I doubt you can understand the letter from a princess. Soda said as he stretched out his hand. Soda. That letter is for Brian. I see so you still want to get closer to the princess, huh? Brando said to Soda and he saw Brian give the letter to Soda. Oi. Why are you giving it to him? Good. Soda nodded at Brian as he ignored the noisy Brando from the side. He opened the letter and read it. Everyone looked at Soda as if waiting for him to tell them what's written inside the letter. They were all curious about the letter from the princess. After a while, Soda looked at them and said, We're invited. The princess invited us to her birthday party and wanted to thank us for saving her. When? In five days at her mansion, Soda replied and he added, 
Of course, we couldn't reject the invitation from the princess so I'll go there with Brian. Oi. I think that Brian is the only one invited to the party. Nope. The princess said that Brian could bring his friends. And I'm Brian's best friend so I think I should accompany him. Soda said with a serious expression as he rubbed his chin. This is the perfect timing. Saya's voice sounded in his mind. Yeah, the timing is so great that I'm feeling my blood boiling at this moment. But before that, I should complete my plan. Soda couldn't help as a grin formed on his face. You should consult Lumalia about your plan. Saya suggested. I'm planning on doing that. I should talk to Jimmy after this. After all, we're all on the same boat. Soda replied to him and found that everyone was looking at him with a blank look. That's what I'm saying. His grin, he's scheming again. Alice said, can you tell us what you're thinking about the princess, Soda? Brando asked, Lumalia, I'll tell you my plan later so let's visit the Adventurer's Guild. Soda ignored them as he turned to Lumalia. He then stood up and patted his clothes. Understood. Lumalia nodded when she saw that Soda was planning something. It's probably related to the party of the princess. Just wait here, everyone. I'm going to the Adventurer's Guild with Lumalia. Soda said as he left the room and took out a piece of yellow paper. He poured his mana in it and it connected to the talisman that Jimmy had. Soda, what's wrong? Jimmy's voice sounded in the talisman. I want you to gather information about the birthday party of the daughter of Venreda family. Soda paused for a moment. Gather information and tell me about it later. I'll head to the Adventurer's Guild so I'll disconnect it. After he said those words, Soda disconnected his connection to Jimmy's talisman. Hmm? Venreda family is a duke household and Soda's enemies are from Noble's household too. I can see what he's planning to do. Lumalia thought as he followed Soda. She came from a noble household too so she knew the influence of the duke family, one of the strongest families in this kingdom. Soda and Lumalia arrived in the Adventurer's Guild. The people inside simply looked at them as they knew why they were here. Soda strode to the reception and asked Enna's legion. The receptionist gave him a stock of paper piles and a letter on top of his it. He smiled while looking at it, as expected the guild master and Lanny Corporation, really did a great job. Lumalia went to his side and took the stock of paper. She gave the letter to Soda. Here. Soda opened the letter and read it in a loud voice, Congratulations, Soda Ayashi. The guild formally acknowledged the creation of your legion, the Dark Oculus Legion. Good luck, we have high expectations for you. At the same time after he read the letter, the adventurers inside the guild roared loudly. They started to congratulate him for officially forming his own legion. They even asked him the requirement but Soda simply said that they will know it later. You can drink in drunker pub, freely. I'll handle the bill. Soda said before he left. Oh. The adventurers inside the guild shouted excitedly because of Soda's words. Everything was moving according to his plan. The next day, Lumalia and the rest of the Dark Oculus woke up early in the morning. Today will be a busy day for them because they were going to accept the new recruits. The people from the guild arrived at the headquarters of their legion. They were the one who was tasked to handle the quest here so that no one could cheat. Lumalia posted the rules of the legion and the requirement to join the legion. The whole circle of adventurers was in an uproar when read the requirements to join the Dark Oculus Legion. Anyone can join as long as you are an adventurer. From F rank and above R can freely join the Dark Oculus, was what it says in the requirements. There's no problem with the requirements but the rules were. They have to complete a quest every day. It was bad if they were low rank as they had to clear more quest. A lot of people hesitate as they don't have a plan to overwork themselves. Taking a quest every day was simply too much for low rank adventurers like then. But. When they saw the point system of the Dark Legion, their hesitation vanished. Lumalia also posted everything that was inside the treasury of the Legion including those mana fruits. They simply take the bait and apply to join the Legion. Everything that Lumalia and the rest did was according to the plan. At this moment, Soda was still sleeping in his room. He was tired and exhausted last night. He had to give the promised mana fruits to Guildmaster and also talk to Jimmy personally about the birthday party of the Duke's daughter. Francis was satisfied that Soda kept his words. He got three mana fruits and an orange grade weapon. It was hard to get this weapon. It took him most of his money to buy it from the hands of his Lanny group. Don't underestimate the amount of mana fruits that he received from Reshka, the monster lord of destruction. Comparing an orange grade weapon to her was nothing. She even had a universal grade weapon in her treasury. After that, he went to the red light district before he went home. Boom. He heard a loud explosion coming from the yard. He knitted his brows as he stood up. Damn. So noisy he said with an annoyed expression while scratching his head. He looked outside and saw a group of people there wearing the uniform of the Ladro Institute. His eyes opened widely as he hurriedly went downstairs. Why are Jean and the rest are here? Soda thought as he increased his pace. From his understanding of her, Jean wasn't the type of person that will not initiate a fight. Especially, if it was in his territory. Soda arrived on the scene and saw a heterochromia girl with lilac-colored hair. 
This girl was familiar to him as he still recalled the assassination incident. The most powerful students of the Ladro Institute, Yanagi Shina. Yanagi was standing in front of Brando who was full of bruises over his body. Brian was lying on a small crater on the side. Behind her, was several unconscious adventurers of various ranks. Just by looking at it, Soda immediately guessed that Yanagi beat these people including Brando and Brian. They were no match for the strongest student. Even though, Brian and Brando grew stronger their power was still not a match to a person who will reach god level in the future. She turned her head and saw Soda looking at her. A wide smile formed on her beautiful face as soon as she caught Soda's figure in her field of vision. Soda shivered as he subconsciously took a step back. He didn't know what this girl wants from his legion. Is she here to join the group? Oh, you're here my dear Soda Tilda, Yanagi said in an alluring tone as she strode towards him. Gulp. Soda was nervous as he watched Yanagi in front of him. Yanagi placed her face close to Soda as she looked at his eyes. You're the most beautiful person that I've ever seen in my whole life. All the people in this world are no match for your beauty. Suddenly, she threw a punch at Soda's face. Soda evaded her fist easily thanks to his quick reflexes that he honed every day. What should I do? I want to destroy you but I can't waste such a person like you. The other people broke easily before I could even have a chance to enjoy myself. Yanagi said in a charming tone as her mana spiked up. Boom. She launched several kicks and threw powerful punches but Soda evaded all of it as he quickly used, agility boost, and, cat speed. He then began to counterattack her as his mana covered his entire body. It enhances his physical abilities by several fold. This was one of the things that he learned in the past week. The two exchanged blows and everyone simply watched them with their mouth agape. They don't know how it started but they started to enjoy the battle in front of them. At some point, they were cheering at Janagi and some were cheering at Soda. Lumalia, Lin, Eugen, and Alice simply watched the battle with a dumbfounded expression. They were here before it started so they knew everything. Yanagi arrived here and she didn't fall in line. She simply heads straight to Brando and asked about Soda. Brando said that she had to follow the rules so Yanagi beat him. The other adventurers and Brian joined the battle but they were utterly defeated. After some time, Yanagi managed to pin Soda's hands. She looked at him with a faint smile on her face. W what do you want? Soda asked as he couldn't remove his hands from her grip. He was using every strength in his body but he just couldn't break free out of her grasp. She's strong, much stronger than he imagined. He was clearly no match even though he was using everything. If he used, possession, or, soul blood mode, he could break free but he didn't want to reveal his ace against her at this moment. Peak B rank, no, rank. Soda estimated her strength based on what he experienced today and the assassination incident before. What I want. I want you so can you give yourself to me Yanagi Shina said as she moved her face forward and placed her red lips on top of Soda's lips. Humph. Everyone was shocked at this sudden development. Lumalia and Lin quickly moved their bodies as they charged at Yanagi. They wanted to stop Yanagi from defiling their precious legion commander. Stop, Yanagi. A loud voice echoed and everyone froze. A heavy pressure pressed on everyone's body that prevented them from moving. A hand grabbed Yanagi's collar and removed her on top of Soda's body. T teacher bargain. Soda was surprised to find bargain here. I'm sorry for the trouble, Soda. This girl disturbed the opening day of your legion. Bargain apologized to him. At the same time, the pressure on everyone's body disappeared. Teacher bargain is here. We are safe for now. Lumali aside in relief. She doubts that they could stop Yanagi if she was to rampage in this place. S. Soda's kiss. Lin muttered while looking at Soda. She was jealous. Ah, put me down, you dumb old man. You'll pay for this. I'm just playing with my dear Soda. There's nothing wrong with it. Yanagi wagged her arms and legs in the air as if she was trying to break free from Bargain's hand. Playing? You call that playing? Okay. I will lock you once again in the boss.e.m.e.nt, Bargain said as he looked at Janagi. He then threw her in midair and flames covered her entire body. No. Old man, I'll kill one day. Yanagi's voice echoed as Bargain sealed her movements using his flames. Once again, I offer my apology as Yanagi always goes out of control, Bargain said to Soda. No need for that, Soda said as he stood up and wiped the saliva on his mouth. I did enjoy it quite a bit. Testing my strength against the strongest students is pretty enjoyable. Still, the disparity is large. Lumalia and Lin sighed. They were shaken when they heard the first part of his words. I doubt that you enjoy that small exchange. You could literally demolish this whole place if you use your skills. Bargain said while looking around at the damage in the surrounding area. Soda glanced at Lumalia and Lumalia nodded her head even without listening to his words. She already knows what he wanted. She stepped forwards in front of the adventurers that wanted to join the Legion and said, Due to some problems we will resume the recruitment three hours from now. We will fix the damages and pay the people who got caught in the battle. The adventurers understood that some problems occurred so they don't have a choice but to turn back and return later after they settled everything. Ouch. 
I feel that some of my ribs have cracks in it, Brian said as he groaned in pain. That chick is the strongest in our institute after all. She's famous for unbridled action. Brando said as he stood up and patted his armor. The two of them didn't have a chance to show their power as Yanagi knocked them out easily. Teacher Bargain, why are you here? Soda asked Bargain. I'm here to pick this girl, Bargain said as he pointed at the girl inside the ball of flames above his head. She said that she will not cause trouble and will simply join your legion but I didn't think that this would have happened. I shouldn't trust her words. Wait. Soda raised his hand in front of Bargain. He checked his ears before asking, can you please repeat what you said before? I'm here to pick this girl, Bargain said as he looked at Soda with a confused expression. No, not that. What's her reason for coming here? Soda shook his head and asked. She said that she will join your legion, Bargain replied to him. Okay, we'll talk about it. Lin, please escort teacher Bargain to guest room also prepare some coffee for us. Soda said to Lin. Oh okay. Lin nodded her head. Soda smiled and he turned to the group of people that were wearing the uniform of Ladro Institute. He was familiar with this group. The girl in front of the group has green colored hair that was tied in two tails. She had green eyes and snow white skin. Her height was higher than him by a few millimeters. She had two dark cherry colored antennas sticking out of her forehead. Her name was Jean Livenist, the vice president of the Sodas Union Fans Club. She was his senior in institute. She had dark circles in her eyes and she looked haggard. She slightly opened her mouth and said, You um. I'm sorry, Soda. Soda tilted his head in confusion. He couldn't understand why she was apologizing to him. Can you explain to me what happened? He asked her in a calm tone. She told him everything without hiding a single thing from him. Basically, when Yanagi discovered their fan club she went straight to their club room, and when she found out that there's no president in the club and its rule, she said that she will become the president. Of course, the other girl rejected it so Yanagi used force to submit them. When they knew that Yanagi wanted to come here, they tried to stop her but she was too strong for them as they knew that she would just bring trouble. No one could stop her among the entire group. Soda sighed as he massaged his temples using his fingers. He the raised his hand and said, It's okay, I'm not angry or anything. Brando was looking at Soda with a deadpan expression. Oi! Soda, don't tell me you want to create your harem here in Legion? Soda, Lumalia, Bargan, and Yanagi were sitting around the table. Yanagi couldn't do anything because Bargan was restraining her. Although she was the strongest student, she still couldn't match the strongest teacher. Lin entered the room with cups of coffee in her hands. She placed the cups on the table and gave them one coffee each. Hmm. Miss Sheena, teacher Bargan said that you came here to join the Legion. Is that right? I'll let you join the Legion but I have a condition. Soda looked at Yanagi and asked while tapping his finger on top of the table. If he could get Yanagi to his Legion then it would be a great way to strengthen their Legion. But she was a double-edged sword. At this moment, no one in the entire Legion could handle her so she would do anything that she wanted. Soda doubt that he could order her. If someone tried to order her then that person would face her wrath. It would even lead to the destruction of their legion. Call me Yanagi, Yanagi said to Soda as if she was giving him an order. Soda sighed when he heard her words. This girl was crazy and there's no doubt about it. Ufufu, I thought that you like a beautiful girl like her. Saya chuckled. There's a limit to it, you know? And this girl's personality is out of bounds. I don't care how beautiful she is. Soda replied to her. Yanagi, can you talk politely to Soda? Bargan said to Yanagi. Shut up, old man. I'm talking with my dearest here so don't butt in. You're an annoyance. Can you please go out, Yanagi said in an angry tone. Then she turned to Lumalia who was sitting beside Soda. Also, why are you sitting there beside my dearest? I'm the one who's supposed to seat beside him. Lumalia was scared but she remembered that Bargan was here. She took a deep breath and said, It's my position as I'm the vice commander of the Legion and Soda is the commander of the Dark Oculus. Huh? Then, I'm gonna be the vice commander so get out of that seat. Yanagi said to Lumalia in a cold tone. Pressures were seeping out of her body. Ufufu, if this old man isn't here then I'll shred you into tiny pieces. You too, my dearest, I'll tear you in the same way. Damn, this so scary. Soda thought while looking at Yanagi who had a faint scary smile on her face. She was still beautiful even when she's angry. Yanagi, I'll lock you in the boss.e.m.e.nt, Bargan said and Yanagi closed her mouth but she was gazing at Soda and Lumalia with a scary look. Okay. We're done here. I don't want to talk anymore. Soda said as he closed his eyes. Fine, we'll leave. Bargan nodded as he stood up and looked at Janagi. Ufufu, that's what I like, you're not brave enough to fight me even though you know that you're weak. Keep struggling, Soda. Yanagi chuckled as she covered her mouth with one of her hands. Let's go, Yanagi. We'll leave, Bargan said. No, you can leave on your own old man. Yanagi shook her head as she smiled while looking at Soda. I can force you to leave. Soda already said that he doesn't want to talk to you. Bargan said to Yanagi. 
No, I'll stay here, Yanagi said strongly. Suddenly, Soda opened his mouth and said, I'll let you stay here if you agree to my condition. No, I'll do what I want and that's the way of my life, Yanagi said. Haze. Negotiation failed. You can go now, teacher bargain, Soda said with a deep sigh. Fine. Bargain nodded as he realized what Soda was trying to do here. Let's go, Yanagi. He grabbed Yanagi's collar and flames appeared on his hand. It slowly swallowed Yanagi's entire body. No, leave me alone old man, Yanagi said but Bargain ignored her words as he controlled the flames to surround her body. In the end, Yanagi gave in. Okay, fine, I'll agree to my dearest condition so let go of me old man. Bargain looked at Yanagi with a serious expression. You agree, right? You can't take it back. He then took out a piece of brown paper in his pocket and threw it in the air. The piece of paper glows brightly as it gives off powerful concentrated energy. D that's the god's contract. You deceive me old man, Yanagi roared angrily as she knew the meaning of that piece of paper. You are right, that is certainly the god's contract. I got it after meeting the gods that oversees our Hebrew kingdom. Bargan nodded while looking at the shining piece of paper on the ceiling of the room. Then, Soda laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, I'll tell you my condition. You will listen to my orders as I'm the commander of the Dark Oculus Legion. Also, you better not call me my dearest. Just listening to it makes my ear tinged. That's all. The God's contract was a contract that gods gave to their subordinates. It was a symbol of authority and if a person uses it the god that owned the said contract will hear their agreement. There's no backlash if they broke the contract but the god will know that someone broke a contract under his slasher rule. It was up to that god to bring punishment to the one who didn't follow the agreement. It was also a sign of disrespect towards the god have heard the agreement if they broke the contract. If Yanagi or Soda wasn't afraid to displease the god in this kingdom then they could break the contract any time. But Yanagi was a citizen of this kingdom. She will not be able to escape if the people in this kingdom heard that she disrespected their god. It was entirely different than beating up the prince of the kingdom. But who knows what this crazy girl will do. Teacher bargain, I hope you keep Yanagi in check. With her personality, I know that she will break the contract if I just said a simple word that she didn't like. Soda looked at bargain and said. He wasn't assured even with the contract so he had to do things this way. Then, why bother taking her in your legion if you didn't like her? Bargain asked. She's strong so she had her own worth, Soda replied with a serious expression. This was the thing that he wouldn't deny. He will take this gamble. He just hopes that Yanagi will follow his orders. He wouldn't use her if he could handle the problem as he doesn't want to owe her even though she's part of his legion. He would only order her if he was in a situation that he couldn't handle. With that plan in mind, Soda planned to let her free under the condition that she wouldn't harm anyone in the legion. Don't underestimate her. She's much worse than you imagine. If you didn't prepare yourself you'll regret it. Bargain said. I know it very well. I'll prepare myself. Soda nodded at him. Bargain shook his head and said, I'll take her first. With her current condition, she'll not listen to anyone. Soda turned his head to Yanagi and saw her chest heaving up and down. She was breathing heavily and he could hear her gasp. Ah, I'll call you, S. Soda. S. Soda. Yanagi kept muttering his name. Is she always like that? Soda asked. Nope. She only became like that when she's near the person she has taken an interest in, Bargain said in response to his question. He grabbed Inagi's collar and said, See you later, Soda. I'll go now. Thanks for visiting, teacher, Soda said as he slightly bowed his head. After Bargain and Yanagi left, Soda and Lumali sighed at the same time. Is this the right choice? Soda asked himself as he looked at his reflection on the coffee. Yanagi could bring benefits to his legion and she could also destroy his legion. It's only a matter of time before he realized the things that he did this time. He turned his head to Lumalia and asked, What are your opinion on letting Yanagi join the legion? It's risky. We don't know what she will do in our legion. Lumalia replied to him. Yeah, it's bad. What do you think about my decision? Soda nodded and asked her. It's bad. Letting someone like her is bad for the legion. We could let her join us but currently, we don't have the means to stop her in case she goes out of control. Lumalia said to him. But I couldn't deny her strength. She had a power greater than all of us. Well, for now, teacher bargain is handling her so we should do everything to strengthen ourselves. Yes, that's right. If you don't want Yanagi to oppress you then you have to work hard to increase your strength. A wide grin formed on his face. Here we go again. A training maniac. Lumalia sighed while looking at him.